Hey, Riddle here. Welcome to my channel or welcome back if you've subscribed. Thank you very much. This morning's topic is organic gardening and we are exploring the indigo kumquat tomato. Now the story of the indigo kumquat, when we moved to Santa Cruz, California uh, five years ago, my neighbors were so kind, but that was the year that my friend Karen here up on the hill introduced all the neighbors to heirloom tomatoes. And one of the varieties that they uh, obtained was the indigo kumquat. Now we've been having a very, unlike the rest of the world, we've been having a very cold summer. So my tomatoes are behind, but at least they're full of flowers. The indigo kumquat is shaped almost like an oval shape. So not quite a, a cherry tomato and not quite a pear tomato and it is kumquat colored or orangish yellow with this really beautiful violet blush on the top of the tomato. It is intermediate which means the tomato makes uh, the tomato plant makes many many tomatoes well into the fall but the special thing about the indigo kumquat tomato is that they are so sweet that they taste more like a fruit than a tomato actually. They're amazing. So let me tell you a little bit more about the indigo kumquat. You can see that it's showing this purple, actually purple color in the stems of the plant, which is very encouraging. There's different types of indigo, um, indigo tomatoes. They've got indigo cherries, indigo blah, 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 blah. But the only one that I've really, has really stood out to me was the indigo kumquat. So I thought I would be clever because I have saved seeds for decades and usually it's a really simple process of just removing the seeds from a healthy fruit into a paper towel, drying them thoroughly and putting them in the Ziploc bag. But when I tried to grow my indigo kumquats the next year, they had crossbred with every tomato in the garden. So I, they, they were not indigo kumquats at all. The skins were thick, the flavor was weird. It was just a mess. And of course, I was so excited to grow my own indigo kumquats. I grew way too many of these freakish inbred tomatoes. And it was a big disappointment the first time I ever experienced that, saving seeds. So this year, when I decided I wanted to try to grow indigo kumquats after not seeing the plants anywhere available in the area, I went online to eBay. When I went online to eBay, it turns out that I would reach out to these different growers claiming to have indigo kumquat tomatoes. And I would say, listen, I had this experience that I tried to save my seeds and grow my own indigos and they weren't true indigos once I uh, you know, got the fruit. And I said, can you guarantee that your seeds are true indigo kumquats? And they would not, which is shocking because they're actually selling seeds on eBay as indigo kumquats and they can't, they wouldn't guarantee it. So after going through three or four growers of the indigo kumquats and them not being able to guarantee that they were actually indigo kumquat tomatoes, I uh, finally found a grower outside of the country, I believe they're in Lithuania, that said that they grew their indigos in a closed environment, in a greenhouse, and that they would guarantee that the seeds were true and I would have true indigo fruit. So we will see. All we can tell you right now is that the plants are showing, uh, you know, that beautiful purple stem, showing sure signs that they are indigo. Uh, but who knows at this point if they're truly an indigo or that they're a mix. So in the next couple weeks, they're just starting to form fruit. And we will see exactly if, uh, you know, if we're going to have true indigo kumquat tomatoes or not. Because if you can find the indigo kumquat seeds and they're true, they are one of the most delicious tomatoes. Like literally, if you could only pitch, you know, grow one tomato, it would be the indigo kumquat. But again, maybe not because it's not a true tomato flavor. It's actually so sweet. It tastes like fruit, which is insane. 
So explore some of the other indigos. I'm trying a red indigo that the grower had this year, and I have no idea uh, what the flavor is going to be like. But I bought it and it's kind of struggling. With my tomatoes, uh, the ones that I grow from seed, they're acclimated to my soil and the different viruses and bacteria and stuff, you know, that and the climate after the second or third year of saving the seeds. But here's a plant that I bought from that grower and see how it's struggling with some kind of bacterial, some kind of viral issue. It's just icky. But yet the plants that I grew from seed, like this one is strong as hell because it's already acclimated to the soil and the different things uh, after the saving the seeds and it being grown in this environment for several years. Getting a lot of these beautiful Italian squash this year. Yeah. Okay, so search them out. Our heirloom tomatoes, if you just grow the standard American tomatoes, you're really missing out. There are so many amazing varieties of tomatoes. And believe it or not, each tomato has something a little different about the flavor. You know, you have your salad tomatoes, which tend to be more sweet. Um, you have your paste tomatoes that have denser fruit that you use for canning. You have your, your small cherry tomatoes that are just great for eating and also for salads. But if you get a dehydrator, and you, you know, you dehydrate your tomatoes, like you slice them, dehydrate them. It really accentuates the difference in the, the, the sugar and acid content inside of the tomatoes. And you would just be blown away at truly the difference in the flavors between the different varieties. Whether it be sweet or smoky or, you know, more a true ketchup, a more tomatoey flavor. Another beautiful thing about a good heirloom tomato is that they're so sweet and they're so flavorful when you can you don't have to add sugar to anything you know sometimes with a traditional marinara or a uh, ketchup or something you add a little bit of sweetener but you don't have to add anything because they're so naturally sweet that um yeah no sugar added but just look at the gorgeous color on these indigos that purple, that purple. I just can't wait till I get some fruit. We're gonna walk over here because I thought I saw a piece of fruit. Ironically, I have some growing in a grow bag over here and it's closer into the shady area under the pines because I kind of strategize growing full, fullest sun I have in my yard. So that'll be my early harvest. And as we get more closer to the shade, this will produce fruit a little bit later. But here's my other indigo over here. And I thought there was a little piece of fruit on it, but huh, maybe it's maybe it's on the other side of the yard there. Oh, you're stuck. Let's unstick this and get her up there. Oops, sorry girl. Get up there. Oh, stand proud. There we go, much better. Let's go to the other indigo plant, see if there's a piece of fruit over there. So this year I was supposed to cut back on my tomatoes. So instead of having 50 different varieties of tomatoes, I have 26 or 27. <laughs> and I still went nuts and I have over 70, 70 tomatoes planted in the ground. Okay, here's the indigo too. They sent me like only six or seven, no, I'm sorry, six or seven precious seeds. And I did get them all to germinate, which is a good sign. Well, I'm, so, oh, here we go. So there is the one fruit that I have. And all you can see is the purple blush on the top of it. Sorry, it's early morning, so the light's not so great and I'm not talking super loud. That always irritates everybody. But you can kind of get an idea of what the shape of the fruit's gonna be. And again, this, that gorgeous purple color. Indigo kumquat tomatoes. Did you know this too? Let's say you wanted to share one of these with a friend, a friend and uh, I told you I only had six or seven precious seeds, so I didn't have a lot of um, extra plants of this species to share with everyone like I usually do. You can literally cut one of these suckers off, put it in a little rooting powder, 
stick that stem down halfway into some good potting soil and it will root. You can clone tomatoes easily. And sometimes, when, actually when I'm pitching off suckers, I will just press them down into the soil and allow them to clone themselves for a later harvest uh, tomato because we're in California and we have a, a super long season here. Yes, ma'am and yes, sirs. So I'm gonna let it go with that. Uh, find yourself some beautiful heirloom tomatoes. Try some new varieties. You will, you will learn which ones you really love. Some people love the green tomatoes for their flavor. Some people love the pink tomatoes. I especially love the Japanese pink varieties. They're super sweet and delicious. Some varieties do better in cold, like the Berkeley tie-dye. Some do better in sun, like the pink Mexican ribbed. There's hundreds and hundreds and hundreds to choose from now. So please, if you like my channel and my garden wisdom, my quick money-saving tips, home repairs, art, and occasional magic, give a hoot, don't pollute, hoo hoo, and subscribe. I want you to take care of yourselves and take care of each other because I believe how we treat each other on the streets is our ultimate reality. Bye for now. Have a great summer.